All right, everyone. Thanks for joining another amazing episode of the Veteran Entrepreneur Masterclass podcast on our YouTube channel. So it's July. Our guest today is Crazy Joe. I'm going to let Crazy Joe say hello in a little bit. I feel like being a little patriotic still this month. So I got, if you're on audio, you can't see it, but I got my American flag background. I've got my Foxtrot Zero shirt, which is kind of cool. Statue of Liberty with the American flag uh, across her her mouth, which is pretty cool. So I'm in a festive American mood and I love America. I love our country. I think it's an amazing place, gives you all these opportunities, hence this podcast. So so I'm going to rock it this episode. And my editors may yell at me for not blurring or having the blur background versus uh, a normal background, but so be it, right? That's why I pay them. They can do the editing, which is fine. Joe, how are you, sir? Tell us about you. Man, it's an awesome thought. First of all, thank you for allowing me to be here and spend some time with you. Thank you for everything you're doing with the Veterans Entrepreneurial Mastermind Group or Master uh, Class Group. It's um, just amazing to be part of that and uh, the people that we get to help. So it's cool. Thank you. No problem. No problem. So you're an Army veteran. So tell me about when you were in. Um, so I uh, went in in uh, 80 and got out in uh, 92, Electronic Intercept. Uh, so I had the privilege of spending uh, most of my career in South Korea, throwing rocks across the DMZ at each other. And uh, it was a, a phenomenal experience. I wouldn't give it back for anything. It's been an honor and privilege to serve our country, uh, something that I uh, uh, love. And when my dad was a 22-year veteran. I got out in 72 right after uh, uh, the, the Vietnam uh, uh, situation. And uh, I followed in his footsteps and uh, it was an honor and privilege to serve. Awesome, man. I commend and thank you for the time you've done as well as your father as well. So thanks so much for giving back to the country. And I think now you're doing even more. Not all your clients are, are veterans, but I think you're doing a ton more as a business coach. We're going we're gonna to get into that. But if you, for our listeners, if you are a veteran entrepreneur and or entrepreneur and you're looking for mentorship and guidance and ideas how do you get from a to b faster or what about this project or this project what should we do or if you're looking to cut costs how, how should we do that anything in your business anything in business at all we've built a group that's the veteran entrepreneur Masterclass group we we get together every month on zoom and that's what we do we get together we talk we collaborate we provide mentorship so i don't care if you're just trying you're just getting out and trying to figure out which way you're going You've been out for 20 years like myself and are still grinding away and, and trying to make your next endeavor work, hence the name of my firm, Street Wealth Endeavor, a little plug there. But this is what we are, and this is who we are. So actually, I'm really excited about this particular episode because Joe is a business coach. When you go through business or you start your own business, myself included, you go from being a master technician in some, and you have some master skill set. And you're, you're under another organization and you realize you're doing all this work and you're generating all this revenue for the business. That's not you. You're getting a W-2 paycheck. You're losing 40% of that to taxes normally. And like, why the heck am I doing this for this company when I can do it on my own and make it all and keep it all, right? That's what most master technicians say. I need to go start my own shop. I'm making other, other people money. I, I, I should be making myself this money, Right. And then you say, okay, well, let's do it. Then you realize you have a skill set in one area that generates that revenue or that income for you. And then all of a sudden you have 50 other things you have to do in running a business and you have zero experience or skill set in all those areas. And you go, oh, shoot, right? Like, what the heck did I just do? And you generally spend the first year or two trying to figure out which way is up, trying to make sure you have cash flow, make sure you got the savings so you, you don't implode the business. And then after a year or two, you kind of figure out which way is up. You realize which hat you're wearing at what time. So to allocate your hats at the right time. But if you have a blueprint and not have to go through all of that, you will probably get so much further ahead, so much sooner, so much faster than I did. And listen from my failure, because I, I will tell you, ever call me, I'll tell you everything what not to do when starting a business because I've pretty much done it all. But somehow we're still here in five years, right? I think if I would have had you three years ago, I'd be much further ahead than I am in my own business. But I think what you do is amazing. So that was my random pontification about my own experience. I wishing I had a coach to help me get my business up and running when I went live on my own five years ago. But Joe, tell me about you and what you're doing now for your clients. Well, well it, it's, it, you just hit it on, you know, on the head. Uh, so many people start their own business. Oh, I want to go make money. And they think it's easy. 
87% of businesses never make it past year two. So congratulations, you're actually in the top 7% of businesses uh, that, that uh, have made it past year five. So congratulations, you're doing a lot of things right. Thank you. And what we've done is we've put together a blueprint, a, a path to walk right through how to build a business that works without you or like you, if you want to have a business that's kind of a job, you have to be there. If you're not there, you make you don't necessarily make money. That's okay, too. Or if you love it so much, it's a hobby. Those are all okay, too. But you still have to follow the same path. And that's what we've developed is a step-by-step roadmap on how to build that business of your dreams. And we've put it all into an online learning system this last uh, two years. So I've taken the 15 years I've been doing this. And and put it into over 200 individual bite-sized lessons, 13 courses on how to do this. Everything from goal setting to time allocations. You know, when you started out, you talk, we we're talking about hats. You see me do this, where you know you got to be the CEO and you got to be the the VP of sales and you got to be the COO and you got to be the VP of marketing and you got to be all these things, man. Your brain starts to explode. Oh, you, oh don't forget about finances. Remember how that was. Oh, you mean QuickBooks and I got and sometimes you even have to be the janitor. <laughs> And, and it's hard, man. It is hard. Running your own business is the hardest thing you'll ever do. This is why 87% of people say, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to go get a job. And that's okay, too, if that's what you want. you got to decide that for yourself. Nobody else can. But if you want to do that, there's a lot of resources out there to help you. You don't have to figure it out by yourself. I mean, that's what, what the, the, the Veterans Entrepreneur Group is all about, is providing these resources and helping people achieve their goals. And that's what I have the privilege of doing. It's just that. I love it. And you've got a just phenomenal attitude. So I always enjoy our conversations. And you just reached out to me. I think we met on LinkedIn. I don't know if I found you or stalked you. or We've been friends for over a year now, I believe. Yep. And like I was going through some things. You're like, hey, let's have a call. What about this? And you offered some complimentary mentorship and guidance for me, my own business, as we we're trying to figure things out. So I definitely appreciate that. Oh, you're just a good dude, good energy. So anyone, uh, early plug, we haven't gotten to the meat and potatoes yet, but if you're looking for a business coach and you want someone who's a mildly nice guy, has a good positive outlook, right? Because a lot of veterans are just, I, I will say, a lot of guys are just beat down and and I, I can't say so much with the women because I don't have too much interaction with female veterans. I, I know we're trying to get more and more in the group all the time, but it's a lot of guys are beat up, right? And they got a negative mindset. I think PTSD brings a lot of guys down. and It's a downward spiral. And if you're not careful, it will suck you down. So we got to, you know, stop that, get stable, and then start looking at growing. I mean, you know, you, you got to stop the bleeding before you can start physical therapy, right? So put the tourniquet on, get healthy, start physical therapy, and then start moving forward. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. You know, with that, something I like to throw out, and we talked last episode too, it's just the physical aspect too. And my assistant today, like she, we jumped on a Zoom and she's, and I was like sweating. I was like putting, she was like, she's like, do you work out every day? I'm like, yes, I work yeah. out every day. She's like, well, why do you work every day? I'm like, you have to, you, you need to, to have your mind sharp. Your body has to be sharp. And when after a workout, I feel good. I just, the days I don't work out, I feel more sluggish and I, I'm not as productive. Now, I will say getting older, it's hard to get up and get the motor running. I do humbly take a lot of vitamins and a lot of different pre-workouts and mix it up. And there's a lot of, a lot of caffeine in there probably, which maybe isn't all perfect, but it gets you going and you do the work, right? Yeah, so they're, I think- They're all connected, mind, body, soul, they're, they're connected. I mean, Tony Robbins talks about this. Everybody talks about it. But it's true. It 100%. really is. Um, if you want to change your attitude, change your physical situation. Stand up. You know, do something different. Look up 45 degrees. Put a big smile on your face. Because if you're looking down and you got a frown, it's hard to be <laughs> happy. No, it's true. I, I have one client, and I won't use their name, and he is a representative of one of the co my companies I work with, where I run their 401k. And we're, we're also personal friends. So I put stuff on Facebook sometimes and, you know, I work out and I'm a father I'm like dad bod. And I feel good because I'm 47 and in decent shape and I feel good because I work at it. Right. And it's nice to be appreciative and like, hey, I'm working hard, feel good. It's nice to get positive reinforcement. And he's like, oh, I want to do that. But I, I, but, 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 but I'm like, dude, just get up. You don't have to run 10 miles. Go walk 
once around the block. Yep. Do something. And it's, it's I don't, the, so, the law of has, inertia, somebody, it's inertia. Somebody said, oh, I don't have time for that. Well, that, that's what I wrote my book about. And that's just, excuse my language, bull crap. Um, because we all got the same amount of time. That's what you do with it. How much time do you, do? you know, I, I asked this, I said, well, how much time do you spend on Facebook, on social media, watching that stupid TV thing? You know, it, turn that thing off and get off and go walk around the block. You have the same 24 hours that I do. And Mark Card- Cardone and all the big, Celebrities have all this money, all this time. Guess what? They have the same amount of time we do, but they allocate it differently. And so if you love your YouTube channels and you love your and so hopefully you're watching this, get on your phone and go for a walk and watch it. That's fine. Right. Why when not? I yes. like I do my workout, I have a little app. I don't even go to the gym anymore. I do it in my living room. And my son loves trains and and I'm 47. I love playing trains too. So I put train videos on. I have a little train set, my floor going around while I'm doing push-ups. It's fine, you know, just to, to have the excuse is just an excuse. It's an right? excuse. It, and, and once you get some inertia going, just like the gym, the first time you have a workout, actually, it's not the first time as you get older, it's the second time. The first day is okay. The second day hurts the lactic acid. The second workout, you feel weak because you're still sore. That's pain. It doesn't feel good. You don't see results yet. But the third time gets a little easier and you may see like a little outline or maybe a little vein or something. And then, okay, fourth, it gets easier the more you do it because your body gets used to it. It turns into a habit. So if you're going to run a business, you've got to have a sharp mind. And the key to having a sharp mind is also having a strong physique that can empower your mind and help you operate at a higher level. And before you start a business or before you get going, get into the best physical shape of your life because it is physically draining, emotionally draining everything. 100%. You said something else about excuses, and, and I like this one. Blame, excuses, denial, stay in bed. Ownership, accountability, responsibility, you've got the or to get you where you're going. You have ownership, accountability, and responsibility for everything that happens to you in your life and in your business. I've got all people say, oh, well, I got mugged. That wasn't my fault. Really? Where were you? Uh, at an ATM at 2 o'clock in the morning. Guess what? You do have some responsibility. So when we analyze things, take ownership, accountability, and responsibility, and move forward. Or blame is Jimmy's fault. Excuses, I didn't wake up. Denial, don't even know I'm lying to myself. That's another one. Denial, don't even know I am lying to myself. Stay in bed because you know what? It's not worth it. Let's get it going, man. We, we We got too much to help the universe with what we're doing. And everyone's helping the universe if you're doing something for, for you know, everything. Every business helps the, the universe in some way or another. I completely agree. So with that, we're going to touch on another topic, which we've chatted about before in the podcast again, which is your purpose and your mission, right? So once you have that epiphany in your mind that you want to start your own business, what is the purpose of your business and your mission for that business? And is there an altruistic aspect to it besides just making money because if it's just making money that's that's you can once you have money money doesn't buy happiness that's true right and so we can talk about all the things there about society and money money enables you it empowers you but it truly doesn't buy you happiness so the more money you make the more people you can help okay so because you know you got a hundred bucks you're not going to help a lot of people you got a million bucks you can go help a lot of people so make more money so you can help more people it gets really simple and and knowing your why Simon Sinek has a great book on, you know, on, on that. If you don't know your why, dive into it. Figure it out. What you want to do. Why are you doing what you do? And then your mission is how you're going to go do that. And I've got a whole course on vision, mission, purpose in brainshare.online. Yes, I just plugged my course. Do it. You're here. Plug your plug. <laughs> and and, and, and you, you need to have that because that's emotional. People buy on emotion. And if you ever forget that, you're, you're missing, missing the whole game. You know, my mission is to help 10,000 businesses this coming year. You know what? That's cool because that's going to help the universe. 10,000? How do you 10, help 10,000? How does one man help 10,000, though? I got to ask well, that question. What, well, so great. How do you so scale that? that? How, how many people are we going to hit with this podcast? Hopefully several thousand. There are several thousand right there. How many YouTube hits do I get? So doing that, how many, every time I do an event, I get a hundred people typically. So actually when you start calculating it out, helping 10,000 people with just even that, remember when we talked the first time, I just gave you a little piece of something to help you move forward. 
And if you're not sure what you're doing or whatever, give me a call. I, I, I love to talk to people just to get them in the right direction. I'm not the right coach or mentor for everybody. Don't plan to be, but I will help anybody that asks for help. And to me, that's what I can do to help the world, the universe, and everything else. Is You want some help? Give me a call. I, I'll help you. I'm not in it for the money. I, I, I Yes, we I, are. We're, not, we're for the money, it, but there's yes, well, but that's not a lie. There is money. We're all working for money. We, we're not we, all. We, you got to have money yes. to, to do what you want to do, and and that's something that we all need and want. But the more we make, the more we can help people. I mean, I sit on the board for the Red Cross. All these board. Why do I do that to give back? I love it. So let, let's try it about business though, and get having that success. So we have the revenue. So we have the means to help whatever organizations make us feel good, right? Make us feel like we're contributing positively to society and giving back. So when a business client comes to you or someone comes to you, what are the general, or is there a general issue or ailment that their business has or they have? Is it is it more personal? Is it mindset? Is it, are they coming to you with business issues? Is it a transition? What 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 are most so, of your clients so, coming to you for? So I see the mindset and I see all of this, but where I start with every one of them is time allocations, because time is our most valuable asset. How you spend your time will determine the success of your life and your business. So if you're not allocating your time, and you as your business changed, your time allocations were changed. Okay, when you first start out, you're probably spending 50, 60 percent of your time on marketing. Now you got some clients, you're doing more operational stuff and it will continue to evolve based on where your business is at in the business life cycle. And it's supposed to. <laughs> so first thing I do is where's your time allocations and then what's your goal setting? What's your vision, mission and purpose, culture, your operations, make sure you're delivering consistency in your product or service. And then you got to know your finances. Wow, look, that's the foundation of every business. People start jumping right into marketing sales when they don't have the foundation. A guy named Dave Packard, you may have heard of him from Hewlett Packard, once told me more companies die of indigestion than of starvation. And that's because you don't have that foundation. And once you have that foundation, you can build. If you don't have a strong foundation, sooner or later it's going to collapse. Build the foundation and build the business from there. So what is the foundation of a strong business? And I can chat about that through experience when I moved from Merrill Lynch to UBS and then from UBS to setting my own firm. And when you move, when you work with a big firm, you know, you've got the relationships, the firm owns the clients. Yep. Right. So you can go have a relationship, but do you have a relationship? So let's talk about the importance of of the strength of either your customer base relationship with your customers and or clients. And before we go there, what is in your opinion, the difference between a customer and a client? So in my business, they're clients. Okay. So when I look at things when my one-on-one -on -one business, they're clients. If you're in a retail space or e-commerce or you've got customers and then you want to build through that customer loyalty ladder, Right, wrong, or different, I get emotionally attached to my client. Relationship. You have a relationship yes, with a them. Relationship. That's the difference. I, well, and, and, and I fire my clients when I care more about their business than they do. <laughs> As that happens, it's interesting. Um, but I look at my clients, I have that personal relationship with them, and I care about them. Um, there's a, a lot of uh, businesses where you're transactionally based. I don't look at it as transactionally based. I look at it as relationship based. I think that's the definition. Transactionally based is, is customers, uh, relationship based, or, or clients. hundred percent. I agree more. And for our audience, I'm going to just share a lesson of my own, one of my own personal favor or, or personal failures, not personal favor. I'm giving you a favor, personal favor. I'm telling you about one of my failures. So, Hey, failures are favors because they don't have to do it themselves anymore. Right. Well, that's, that's true. So, I learned very quickly when I first built my own professional career as a 401k consultant, when I was with Merrill Lynch in the early 2000s, I built relationships with payroll companies that gave me clients, gave me not leads, not prospects, but clients. Hey, Brett, you were the 401k advisor for this company. Brett, you're the 401k advisor for this company. You and like, boom, boom, boom. And I had, had a relationship with several representatives and I got to know them. They became my friends. Right. And all I did was just maintain those relationships. And as long as I had strong relationships, with those reps, they chose to assign me as the consultant for their, their clients, their customers, 401k plans. 
So it was all relationship based. However, a failure, like that's a great thing. How's it a failure? Well, the failure on my part, I had too many relationships referring me too many clients that what they were missing was the R word, the relationship part of the (laughs) client relationship. There was no relationship. So I actually didn't have all these clients. I had a bunch of customers that met me once because I was too busy growing, growing, setting up, setting up new, 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 new. I never was going back, reestablishing and building the relationships with the new clients that came to me. So when I transferred firms, I, I left when Merrill Lynch failed in 08 and Bank of America had to buy them and save them. I said, enough of this. I moved from Merrill Lynch to UBS in, in early 09, in the middle of the financial crisis. And I figured all these clients would come with me. And I humbly learned very quickly that I had maybe 15% of those relationships were actually relationships. And the other 85 were customers that I met one time who could care less if I move from one firm to another. Like, who are you again? Why are you? And I'm like, oh no. So, and for me, talk about stress. And I was still an employee at that time. UBS paid me for those quote unquote relationships, which I did not have. So they gave me a bunch of money, said, come over here, bring relationships here. And I tried to, and I brought 15%. I was decimated. And so then I had to start paying taxes on the money they gave me with no revenue coming in. And I humbly, I will share at that time, it almost was so bad where I was suicidal to a point. It was brutal because of all this money I owe, all this business I'm supposed to have, I don't have it. I had an ego. My ego was checked, right? Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, wow. I had to start all over again in the hole because they gave me money that I had to pay taxes on over the next several years. So I was like, I instead of feeling good about the move, I was like, what did I do? Why did I blow up this thing that I built? Luckily, though, I still had relationships And the stock market stabilized and people came back and like, hey, I'm here. And I still have the relationship with representatives that referred me clients and customers. And slowly I clawed back and rebuilt my business. 3X, what it was before I left. But one of the things that you also did, because we had this conversation, is you just kind of started setting, okay, what is this going to look like? I don't want everybody. I remember you telling me that, you know, I don't want everybody. I'm going to be very picky about who I work with. Because we only have so much time. So I'm going to be very selective about who I work with. You know, where you're going to be in five years depends on three things. The knowledge you gain, the people you associate with, and the actions you take. And that people you associate with is a critical factor that you make me, you have to make conscious decisions on that. And I know you do, and I do, because, you know, we only got so much time and we can't do everything for everybody. So that you know, I've been spending a lot more time with the, with the veterans, and actually down at the VA, uh, trying to do some uh, good for the for the world. So well, let's talk about that. So you and I have both made a conscientious decision you know, a, a year and a half ago when I said, "Hey, this is who I am. This is what I am. This is who I like working with. These are clients I want. I want clients like me, my fellow yeah. veteran entrepreneurs. Let's go there." Hence, hence I, the podcast. I just, I, I just got goosebumps. I'm sorry. I, I, I really did. I got goosebumps thinking about this. So, sorry. No, I love it. Let's go back to you. So if you are a veteran entrepreneur and you're in your business, you're trying to figure out and you're trying to figure who your clientele should be and you want people like you, there's a huge database or pool of other successful veteran entrepreneurs that are in business that think like you. It doesn't matter the branch. doesn't matter the time. We're all veterans. We all volunteered. Some of us didn't volunteer. Some of the <laughs> Vietnam guys, like they didn't volunteer. But they're still veterans, right? And so we we all still have that bond. So no matter what, I don't care your age, your sex, your race, your color, your creed. You're a veteran. You're we're veterans. We right. it's we right. Yep. And so we always I don't care who your background is. I take those calls because we have that in common. Now that's one thing in common, right? But other than that, then you got to start to do the dance and see how things are. And just because you're a veteran doesn't mean you've got the right mindset or successful mindset. So mindset comes back to everything again, which comes back to our choices and our decisions and, and healthcare and self-care and mental care, which, which we thought Jason Dorado all out there. But let's go back to you and how you are now deciding to take some more of your time to go help with the VA or just kind of talk about what you're doing there. 
Well, uh, when I implemented the, the online learning system, you know, I can only help a certain amount of people with one-on-one. And I love that. And that's still my passion because you, when you look at somebody and you watch them go from, you know, uh, barely surviving and, you know, eating top ramen every day and mac and cheese to, wow, you know what? I can afford some steak and lobster once in a while and watch that business grow where they're not working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week trying to make it work to where they're comfortable and moving and have a direction of where they want to go. That's fulfilling to me. But I couldn't help as many people as I wanted with the one-to-one. So that's why I implemented the online learning system so that I can help more people. And specifically, you know, working with veterans is great because they understand things different than, than, than the civilian, most of the civilian population. I won't say all, but a lot of them. And I always rather work with a vet if, if I have a choice. I mean, I just, uh, you know, we get it. I wouldn't say I just you shared something there and some people hopefully won't be offended by it. I wouldn't say veterans are different, but we have a different additional dynamic, right? So we all work in corporate America. We're in the United States, wherever you work globally, it's fine. However, if you're a veteran, you have another dynamic, another experience that non-veterans don't have. So I wouldn't say you're different, but you just have a different You've perspective got, it, based it, on your experiences. Yeah. Cause it's, an, it's another experience that we, we all have to, uh, some, uh, understanding of that we've been, you know, through that. I mean, when I say chain of command, you know exactly what I mean, right? Every veteran does. And, you know, when we say, you know, SOPs and and standard operating procedures and things like this, um, it's a relationship that you understand that that some people that haven't been in the military, uh, it's harder to explain. And it's okay. There is no right or wrong. It's, uh, you know, we're here to help. and, And I like to help veterans and help give back. So, so with that, you triggered two stories in my mind that I think are relevant now. So the first story goes back to you talking about time management. I'm going to share what uh, one of the veterans reached out to me, booked a call. It was a Friday morning when I, ha- I have my son every other Friday. So I try and unplug and just be focused to be a present father there. And this guy called me. He's a veteran. He's like, yeah. I'm like, what's up, dude? And I'm like packing my truck. Like, I make time for him. You're a veteran. I'm going to make time for you, but be efficient, yep. be effective. Let's let's chat. What's up? He's like, yeah, well, I'm just trying to figure out how to balance. Like, balance what? He's like, well, I got my business. I'm real busy, my business, but I want to be a present father. And so I'm I'm uh, I'm going to my early church men's group meetings at six in the morning. And, and I'm like, okay, so what's what's your issue? What's your challenge? He's like, well, I just want to be able to sp- spend more time with my family and be present. I'm like, okay, do you time block time? Do you just put time down to spend time with your family and turn your phone off? Not listen, not check. It's like, yeah, well, I, you know, I want to, but, 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 and I'm like, that almost enraged me. The excuse, like, like, don't call me for help when you're not willing to do it. And you really don't want help. Right. Right. And so like, if you go to those men's group meetings, you just sit there and complain at, at each other and you're not, there's no action. Just It's just a vent. Like, I don't know what that is besides a waste of time. That's driving me nuts. Um, when people call me, I want to do something. Okay, well, what are you doing? Well, I want to, but I can't because of this, this, this. What, what are your thoughts when people make self-excuses, when they say they want to change something, but they really aren't willing to make the changes? So, so to me, I, I have a formula. It's in my book. D times V times F must be greater than R. D, dissatisfaction times vision, times first steps, must be greater than resistance. And that's resistant to change. Everybody's resistant to change. So either you're not dissatisfied enough or you don't have a vision of where you want to go. And then you got to be willing to take the first steps. So what? my background is in engineering, so I love formulas because it makes... I don't have to think as much. Follow process. So, So are you not dissatisfied or don't you have a strong enough vision? From what you just said, he probably doesn't have a strong enough vision of what he wants to achieve and how, what that looks like because he's not willing to change. Until he gets there, I, nobody can help him but himself. And that's the main thing. If you really want to do something, you will. If you take a call, yeah, thanks, okay, and you're not going to do it, okay. But if you really want to change something, you got to say, yeah, I need to change for the reasons you just shared. And then stick, okay, what's the first step? Yep. Right? One thing get that done what's the next thing and so and the hardest part is that first step that 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 calendar that time blocking um the other thing you said was balance 
Okay, so here's the I, I, I do this one on one of my one of my events. Um, balance when, when you're trying to balance something, you can't just have balance. Balance is constant adjustment. If you're trying to balance this thing, guess what? You're constantly adjusting. So don't think that you're going to have balance and be the yin yang and everything. No, you're constantly adjusting your calendar, your priorities. That's part of the game is that constant adjustment and that constant re-evaluation of what you're doing today, what do you need to do tomorrow? And if it's not changing, your business isn't changing and your life's not changing. And if that's what you want, that's okay too. Yeah, and I think for some people, especially if you're a father and you're trying to delineate between time with your family and, and you change your role, a business owner role, yes, father role, and what commitment do you have to each? And so for myself, I just know from my own example, I am different than most because I'm a halftime dad. And I went through things when my son was one and a half, two, where his mom, whatever, started dating someone else. And then that's when the balance really got out of balance. And then everything changed. I'm not going to go there, but I didn't see my son for several months. And it, I was seeing my son every single week and sometimes more than once a week to several months. I didn't see him because of some legality issues, which have been fixed. And so those several months when I didn't have my son made such an impression in my mind that I said, when I get him back, not if, but when I get him back, I am going to be the most present father I can. And I've made that mental commitment and that physical commitment, that emotional commitment, that spiritual commitment to my son to be present where every, my clients know, Hey, if you try and reach out to me Wednesday afternoon, I'm out of pocket. If you yep. need me Thursday morning, I'm out of pocket. Every other Friday when I have my son, after 11 o'clock, I'm out of pocket. Every other Monday when I have my son, I'm out of pocket. I'm going to be the most present father I can. My business is still running. I have a team to back me up, but I made that commitment and I stick to it. And sometimes the calls will come in, right? But well, that's just a commitment I made and you just do it. For me, I couldn't just do it unless I utilize some tools. So for me, when I do my calendar, the first thing I block off is family time, time with my kid, and date night with my wife. I have date night with my wife once a week. Guess what? Life is good. Skip two weeks. Guess what? Is It's not so much. But those are the priorities, and that's what you have to block off first. And when you block it off, because I had to learn this. I was driving my kid to school, and I'm on the phone doing the multitasking thing, and he's going, Dad, can, can you get off the phone and just be with me? Oh, man, just ripped my heart apart. It was like, dude, boom, no more. When we're together, guess what? The phone goes off, and I shut it off. And we're together, spending time together, because I, he's 27 now. I can't get those days back, and I wish I would have learned my lesson earlier. So you out there with kids, with family, block off that time, turn off your stupid phone, turn off the TV, and spend quality time together. Play a game of cribbage or something or whatever. But be present. Be, be present. present. Be there. You know, my <laughs> son's even taken it to the point where, like, I love my red wine. I don't drink beer. I don't drink hard drinks. I like, like my red wine. And after a long day, glass of red wine. And last weekend, I took my son up to Big Bear. Oh, yeah. I got a little cabin for the night. Just him and I. It was nice. It was a little, a little hot tub outside. And at night, we went out for pizza, came back. And we put on some old school classic country music and we were just dancing. Him and I were dancing. And it was funny. He's even like, I'm like, come on, dude, let's dance. And he's like, Daddy, put the wine down. He's like, <laughs> Don't dance with wine. I'm like, Daddy, put the wine down and dance. Fine. All right. So I put it down. He's in a chair and we're dancing. And neither one of us are good dancers, but we're just having fun and you're being present. And that's it. And the, our kids see and know that. And they feel, yep. they know if you're present. They know if you're like, I see it at the park. Oh, yeah. I see it. The parents are there. They're just buried in their phones. The kids doing whatever. They're not really there with their kids. They're they're physically there, but they're not spending time. And the kids look. And the kids. Oh look yeah, and they know it. And in fact, there's a book. I was just going to look at, look up. There's a, a a book I just finished um, that that talks about this. And I'm trying to 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 remember the name of it. And I but it's about how um the your your phone and other things are actually a distraction that. Uh, prevent you from having fun 
It's something about like you fun. right now. Yeah, I mean, when I was looking, I was looking for that book. Exactly. Uh, Don't look up for uh, a book in yeah, the middle but, of a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but it's it, it, it's uh, that something about the fun, and you can't have fun and be present when you're uh, with that stupid phone you thing. You can't, and it's really hard to focus, and and you try and do both, and and your kids see and you feel it. So if you're going to be present, lesson from the podcast: you're a veteran entrepreneur, your father, you're a husband. Time block your time and let your spouse know, your clients know, your family. Hey, this time I'm in business. I'm rock and rolling. Leave me alone. Now yep. this time I'm here with you, but be there. Stick to it. Hold yourself accountable. You don't need a you don't need a men's group. You either choose to sit there and you spend time with your wife or your family, your kids, your clients, or you don't. So I agree. So time blocking and then sticking to it and holding yourself accountable. You don't have to have someone else hold you accountable. You hold yourself accountable. If you want to do something, you're going to do it. If you if you really don't want to do it, you're kind of lying to yourself. That's an integrity check. Yeah. Right? right? And at some point, you, you kind of try or you just do. Right? And those who do succeed. Those who don't sit in the sideline and watch life go by. I like the quote from Yoda. Uh, do or do not or don't do. There is no try. Just do it, you know, Nike. Our, our, our subconscious mind, our, our conscious mind make things so complex sometimes. It's like, no, stop being stupid, just do it. Like it. So for the point, so if you're a veteran entrepreneur and you're listening again to the podcast, number one, if you're you're trying to figure out what to do, prioritize and time block. Time block, yeah. time block, time block. I don't care if you're the most successful person in the world or the most broke person in the world. We all have 24 hours a day. And by the way, white space is bad. If you have nothing scheduled and you're scheduled to do nothing, and there's probably more than enough to do. So if you've got white space on your calendar and your subconscious mind says, I'm not supposed to do anything. No matter what I do, I'm doing above and beyond. Put on a block, put on firefight, put on, you know, read. But if you have nothing, no matter what you do, you're going above and beyond. If you have a white space on your calendar, you should put the Veteran Entrepreneur Masterclass podcast episode in your white space and listen there to it. There you go. Episode. And learn something, right? There you go. Hopefully. Hopefully we're delivering some value. So that, let's have another plug for the audience. If you're listening to this, I do welcome your feedback. Come back to Joe or I. Say if a question, comment, there's something in your business you're working on. If it's scaling, if, if it's growth you're worried about, if it's profit maximization, if it's reducing costs, if it's finding customers. Oh, going back to the original point you brought, time blocking and having customers. Anyway, if you're listening to the podcast, sorry, my mind's going now 50 different places, which is a blessing and a curse. Chris is like, you need like five people to keep up with your mind. When, when my mind's on, it's like, ching, 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 ching. It's, it's a blessing and a curse. However, bring it down a notch. That tangent, I caught myself in the tangent. Now I just got rid of my thought. Dang it. Well, it's what that kind of like marketing time, sales time. These are different modalities. If you're thinking like a salesman and you're trying to do finances, you're going to fail big time. So, you know, if you're in that marketing mindset, stay in that marketing mindset, put your marketing plan together. And, and how often should you review a marketing plan if you are in business? So I, I, I look at a tactical marketing and a strategic marketing. The tactical marketing you review every week. Okay, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? How many leads I'm getting? On a quarterly basis, I do my ROI analysis. Is that marketing making my money or not? If it is, keep doing it, double down, have somebody else do it, and add them on. You want to have at least 10 marketing strategies going. Because if you only have one or two, your business is at risk when that fails. It's not if, when it fails. I mean, you, you go back in newspapers, I, everything has a, it has a life cycle. So have 10 different marketing strategies, run your ROI analysis. If you're not sure where to get marketing strategies, I've got 72 different marketing strategies in my system uh, in the marketing uh, module. That there, There's more than enough marketing strategies you can do. Evaluate, test and measure, ROI, keep doing it, kill it and bring on the next. Right. And if you're a technician in a different area and you don't have that skill set, there's so many marketing companies out there now that can help you and can scale. You know, I will share, I'm going to ask you, what's the difference between marketing and sales momentarily? And we, uh, I've learned that lesson the hard way. I've, I've complained about that lesson multiple times now. So I had a coach and I hired a sales coach and with the sales process. And I had him for the last six months and good gentleman tried well, meant well, but I sat there after six months. I'm like, look, I'm paying X amount. How many new clients have I gotten from this relationship? And he's like, zero. 
Okay. Well, so I think we're done. Yep. Right. We just had that. Like, well, we kind of we should have been da, 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 da. like, look, dude, six months, zero. That that revenue I could have applied other places. Right. So I'm going to come back to you. If you're in business, sales is not marketing. Marketing is not sales. So Joe, talk to me about that. What's the difference? Okay. So I and I got a little video on this or a little thing. I'm sure you um, do. I'm yeah, sure you yeah, do. Yeah. New prospect dollars. In between those two, there's a major event that happens. For us, it's probably a video call, a phone call, or a face-to-face. -face. Everything driving from a new prospect or suspect, whatever sales training you've been through, to setting that meeting is marketing. From that, from that first meeting to money is sales. Marketing is all about, for, for us, setting an appointment. If you've got a, a brick and mortar, it's getting somebody in the door. If you've got an e-commerce, it's getting to the website. And then it's sales from getting there to the dollars is sales. Getting the appointment or getting somebody in the door is marketing. That simple. Keep it that simple. The hardest part to know when you are in business, and this is a failure of mine, which I've spoken about before, is it's easy to feel, hey, I'm doing something by marketing. Oh, I'm yeah. marketing. I'm doing oh, I'm stuff. Sending, I'm, I'm sending out this. I'm doing this. It, it, but if it's not getting your ROI, it's a waste of time and energy. And the issue is how do you then know what the right steps are when you're trying that marketing? Do you push a little bit more just to get to, to that, that tipping point where it starts turning into ROI? Or is it a, a black pit that's just sucking your cash flow and time in, which will never turn into something? And that so, there's no easy answer there. Well, I, there is. Oh, okay. Before you start something, first of all, you do a, you, you do an, a quick analysis. I've got it in my system that says, okay, if I do this, I think I'm going to get this many leads. This is my conversion rate. This is my average dollar sale. I should make this much money. Here's my investment in that. If, and you guess, okay? You take a swag. Are you familiar with swag? Scientific 100%. Wild. Yep. So wild guess, big and, ass, and big then guess. You set, and then you set a time frame. Okay, I'm going to do this for three months and then evaluate whether I got my ROI or not. In three months, you get your ROI and then you can make a conscious decision. Continue, kill it, bring on the next one. If you've got 10 different strategies lined up, you're not worried about throwing one away. It's the time that you don't have anything lined up. Oh, what am I going to do next? Because you have a plan. If you have 15 things that you could do, you know, oh, you know what? The, Email marketing didn't work for me. Uh, cold calling didn't work for me. Uh, my signage didn't work for me. I've done TV commercials, radio commercials, you name it. I've tried it to figure out what works. Now, uh, somebody said, well, you know, what's your best one? Well, I don't want a best one. I want 10 good ones that are giving me 10% of my revenue. So I don't have to worry about one not working or not. And when you start thinking differently, the business starts changing. And it starts being fun. 100%. I agree with that. So I, I've never thought of having 10. I think it really depends on your capacity and your bandwidth too. You know, so for any- You can't newer, start out with 10. Yeah. You can't. You start out with one or two. This is one of them, right? You've got the, the networking groups. You're probably doing a lot more than you think. Uh, uh, I've got a branding. That's a marketing strategy. Events, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, email marketing. You've got more than you think. Your vehicles wrap. That's another marketing strategy. My my vehicle my vehicle wrapped. I got my ROI in two weeks. Really? Guess what? I'm keeping my vehicle wrapped. Does your wife like that on date night? No. Should we take a different car? <laughs> <laughs> she won't, she's like, I'm not driving that car. It looks like a big billboard. That's it's okay, awesome. honey. I, it, pay, it pays for dinner, right? It made the revenue, which pays for dinner. Then okay, I go for a ride that thing anytime. That's awesome. I, yeah. So I I love driving around. Hey, just, hey, well here's hey, call me. Let's have some fun. So let's let's um, talk about though a little deeper. So I like the idea of eventually getting eventually getting to ten. However, realistically, if you're gonna do one thing, do that one thing very very well. So my thought going through my mind as you shared I am 10 start with one try and make that one thing you're going to do as good as it can be that one yes. thing yes it comes down to 
going it's not just doing things haphazardly if you're going to do something really do it do it right and a lot of that comes down to attention to detail yeah so this is the other story that came to my mind when you were speaking before and, and i know this is your episode and i'm taking a lot of time but i feel like i'm like having you and i are good like you and i are on the same level mentally so like we're there so this is right. this is a good lesson for a veteran entrepreneur and i think we've all gone through this so i remember uh summer of was it 96 or 7 i was at the base or i was an officer candidate school in quantico virginia it was eight million degrees in july or august camera was there it was hot as human and, right it's hot and human it was disgusting right but you're young and tough and somehow you made it through and when we were sitting there in one of the big in one of the big assembly areas for a classroom i remember with your platoon and you're all sitting there and we're like oh let's get uniform and so we're all kind of trying to dress the same and put our paper out the same and pencils the same and and then we all even had our canteens out in front of us. We had canteens back then. I think canteens yeah. are gone now. They used the Campbellback bag. I don't know if they even have canteens. But anyway, we put our canteens in front of us, and we were all so like, look at us. We're good. We're all we're all uh, we're all symmet uh, symmetrical. We're all balanced. We all look the same. We're all har harmonious. Good. We're we're great. And then I remember the sergeant major, some senior list got up there. He's like, oh, you guys think you're you're good? Oh, huh? well, what about the rings on your canteens so the ring that holds the the oh. cap on the canteen yep the, why is not all the same way why is it all uniform right you're like oh damn so that comes back to attention to detail and so just another failure just i could go through with specific uh, ones I, I, Please, I'm gonna yeah, give you back one. to you back I'm to you you go you go so, attention so detail. what, what i think everything. you're talking about is focus Follow one course until success. Avoid SOS, shiny object syndrome. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, Avoid money. Brett syndrome? <laughs> I am shiny object king. Oh, 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 money, 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 money. No. Pick what you're going to do. Do it really well for so long and then decide, do I keep doing it? And when you do it, if you're making money out, you can pay somebody else to do it. That's delegation, not abdication. Delegation. Big difference. Delegate it out because you're making money and then add on the next one and then add on the next one. If, if it's making money, you can delegate it out for most things. This you, you, you don't want, and, well, and then you decide what you want to do and what you don't. Um, I can delegate out a lot of the, the things that I do, but I, I love doing events. I love doing networking. And those are the things, and that's all I do. I don't do my email marketing. I don't do all of that stuff. I put the content together and I let somebody else do it because they're better at it than me. Yeah, with that though, but the, the issue, the issue I'm finding, and I don't know if you're experiencing this or two, I will share the last couple of years, really since COVID, the attention to detail has dropped with a lot of vendors and suppliers. And even as I'm brought in help and assistance for my own business, like if you're going to have an event like this podcast, if you're going to have a podcast, you have a certain time, you're going to make some collateral for it. You're going to push it out. Like having the right time zone, like depend you're here. It's, it's, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. So a lesson, if you're in business, every single thing your team does or does not do, it's not their fault. It's not their job. It's, it's you. It's a hundred percent reflection on ownership. You. Ownership. You, everything that happens in the company is your responsibility. And you say, well, I, I, I got a bad employee. No, you've got no. a bad process to hire an employee. There are no people problems. There's only process problems. Right. And with that, and then you catch yourself, right? So I, I'm going through, we had some transition and just team and learning and training. And then what's your training process? And so, you know, when there's a small team, you are the training process, right? <laughs> yep. So if it's not going well, you got to look in the mirror first. You can't blame. You got to look at yourself first. Like, what am I doing wrong first? And then if you, you train, you tell them what you're going to do, you show them what you're going to do, you let them try, you either praise or retrain and you do it all over again. Like that's training 101. And when you go through stuff, like I just caught caught some little things here and there. Like, hey, this is like, oh, well, I just did it. No, <laughs> it's not a little thing. It's a huge thing. If I can't get someone's first name right, do they want to give us $3 million to invest of their money? No, 
right? So it's a little, I'm calling myself out. This is, this is, well, but that's a process. Um, and you know, phonetically spell the name. How do you, you know, you know phonetically this, but everything's a process that we can help people learn and, and do if we take the time to define the process. Uh, don't give a shit. Excuse my language. You know what? I think there's some of that don't give a shit and then lack of process. Um, and, and then there is attention to detail. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of just don't give a shit. So that, you're, that's, a, I think, almost a good point to end this podcast. Cause you and I could keep this going for another couple hours just in all the different areas. I will share, you're building your business. And there were some memes. And I've, gone, I've seen this before in the past. No one will ever care as much about your business as you, the business owner, period. You can't expect your team to care as much. However, if you're trying to find and build a team, you cannot make someone care that doesn't already care. You can't force, you can't motivate. If someone doesn't care, they're just there for a job. It's a nine to five. Fine. If that's the role or well, that kind of person, that that's a good fit. And that's all that role needs. Fine. But if you're dealing with more sophisticated transactions, more true client relationships where there are relationships every single thing you do it's their birthday do you reach out do you send a card is it addressed the right place did you send it out a week before there's time for the mail to get it so they receive it before their birthday little things like that every single thing you think about and do if you're thinking a certain way and you have someone on your team who doesn't care you can't make him care so that's something I think. Let me let me know your your thoughts as you're well, chatting. Well, and your be consistent there. about it. Don't send out a, a, a birthday card one time every three years. You need to be consistent about it. So consistency is one of the foundations. That's the standards about the business. If you're going to do something, do it consistently. Put the process in place and make sure it's happening. The the more process you get, focus on process, the the easier it is. That's what SOPs are about in the military, right? It's hundred percent. You don't need to get uh, elaborate training. You need to know it, but here's the SOP. Here's the process you follow. Great. Hey, this doesn't work. Great. Fix the SOP. It's okay. And that lesson there, I'm trying to look at my library right now. The book, The E-Myth. Yeah, by the Michael E-Myth, Gerber. The E-Myth Revisited talks about building an SOP, everything you yes. need to do. And then what tool set, actually, I'm just curious. I'll tell you what tool I use and one that on this crazy Joe. What tool set do you use or, or software do you use or old school pen and paper? What do you use to build an SOP or recommend your clients use to build an SOP? So it depends on where they're at in their business. Okay. So um, you know, when you first start out, it's uh, Google Docs. And you put it together in, a, in a, uh, an operations manual. And, and it's just that, an operations manual, and you put it together. And then as you get more sophisticated, you can get other tools. There's Touchstone by uh, Business Development Corporation. There's um, a ton of them uh, out there that you can utilize, depending on how sophisticated you get. At, at HP, we had a whole system. You know, a, a billion-dollar company is going to be very different than a million-dollar company. Oh, 100%. And you, you're going to need different tools and systems. Um, but when you're starting out, Google Docs is just fine to, you know, a, a template and get it going. We use we use Monday.com. I'm not well, a plug for them, but Monday.com is like Excel on crack. Yeah. And so with with Monday.com, you get, here's a process. You put it in. When this happens, this happens, this happens. And you can't go to the next one until that's done. You can yep. sign people. You have dates. When a project is done, it moves down off the board. So it's out of your your process. So I love Monday.com. They're, they're, they don't sponsor me. I wish they, they did. Uh, but just hey, an you idea never I like money.com, Asana. There's a uh, um, Asana is another one. Uh, so there's there's lots of them out there. There in my brain, if you're trying to figure out the best one, don't get one and get started because tomorrow there's going to be a better one out because technology is going that fast. So just get something, get started. That's the hardest part, and you can always make it better. I, I mean, like that's how the Japanese ate the, the car industry. Get something out of there, make it better, make it better, make it better. 100%. Um, Dr. Deming with, uh, you know, the whole quality cycles, plan, do, check, act. Continuous improvement, continuous improvement. So just like just like you and I, I think that's a good place to end it, crazy Dr. Joe. I'm going to call you Dr. Joe. You know, if you are a veteran entrepreneur and you have thoughts, you got questions, you got concerns, you were looking at efficiency, you look at scalability, you want to look at, at cost cutting, whatever it is, 
reach out, send a comment or put it in the comment section. If there's a topic that we are not touching on that you think would be beneficial to you and your business, put that topic in the comments below. This has been a phenomenal episode. Crazy Joe, leave us with one parting thought. Okay, um, so uh, I'm going to plug brainshare.online. Oh, yeah, I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. I'm such a hey, jerk. Man, no, Joe, no, how brain, did people go, reach go you? How did brain, I forget that? Go I'm... to brainshare.online. There's a button at the top that says schedule a time. If you're ready to go in there, use the uh, the code DD214, and all veterans get a 50% discount on everything. So DD214, pretty easy to remember for most of us. 15 or 50? Did you... 50, five, zero, 50 percent. Oh, come on, man. I'm here to wow. help the universe. You, you're going and, all veteran, man. That's huge. And, and, and if you can't afford that, call me. I'll figure out a way to, 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 to work with you to help you because that's what we get to do is we get to help people. Awesome. And I'm Brett Henderson, founder of the Veteran Entrepreneur Masterclass Zoom group, podcast, YouTube channel. But also my firm is Strategic Wealth Endeavor. We do wealth management and business consulting for veteran entrepreneurs. Our mission is to position you to accomplish yours. Thanks for being on here. Looking for the next episode. Crazy Joe, we're going to have you back in six months. Have a great weekend, brother. Love you. Out. You too. Ciao.